Time and shit might have been doing some shit, but anyways, hold on, that ain't the point. One, uh -oh. two, and uh, and the U, and the U, and the You are now rocking with All Blacks Radio Atlanta, home of a $5 stand and your number one station for independent artists. So, it's your girl, Big Show, and your newest favorite, Ben C. Lacey. Tune in to the truth session. All Blacks Radio Atlanta. Oh, Yo, man, what's good? It's one of those days. Oh, guess what? Four five eight three. That's it, right? Yeah, I got the number. Yeah, four five eight three. I got the number. Okay. All right, yeah. So we are gonna turn this motherfucker all the way up. Yo, what's going on, man? It's your girl, big show. Uh oh. And we got Lacey Dow. I remember the number. Good job. So you know what I'm six seven eight seven seven seven. Eight, eight months. Got it. <laughs> Look, I don't know Kia's number. Mm. Oh man, that's messed up. I can't call this hoe for nothing. If I lose my phone. Why well, messed up? Let me get that together. So sorry. Yep. Because sometimes sometimes hold the hold. Oh shit. There it is. Alright. Um <laughs> Yo man, what's going on? Y'all already know what's up, man. It's your girl Big Show, man. We got Lacey Dow, it's a truth session. And uh we got a few topics that we're gonna talk about today, man. We had a couple of interviews lined up, but man, you know how that go. Uh one of my people oh, had man. to um reschedule because he had an allergic reaction, but we're gonna holler at uh Superfood Barbecue uh, sometime this month. Uh, we did have a phone interview with them. What was that like last week? So y'all already know what's going on or what not with them. And then we got Stinger Venom. Stinger Venom gonna be in the building tonight. And if y'all couldn't tell, man, we got our mask on tonight because fucking COVID shit is real. If y'all haven't been watching the news, man, these numbers been spiking in a whole lot of different areas or whatever like that. And we gonna talk about that too. Right. You know what I'm saying? Uh, another thing we're gonna touch base on is um, a lot of these murders that's been happening in the trans community. Um, so if y'all got opinions, thoughts about any of that, you need to call us up. 678-777-4583. Y'all know where the deal is. You feel me? Uh, okay. And so, per <laughs> usual, you know, per usual, we of course are going to play catch up. So what you do this week? This okay, weekend? so, oh, this Friday, I meant to just have a regular dinner with my friends, but it turned into a whole night shenanigans and I had a party at my house oh, and then this Saturday a good friend of mine Ashley came down and we we're supposed to just meet up for just regular like dinner and then have some hookah it turned into a fucking party and we like no, the party no no until, no 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 I'm gonna tell you that I'm still recovering from Saturday right now I'm still recovering from Saturday literally and then Sunday we we're supposed to go to Mellow show because Mellow had a show y'all Mellow is our friend she has a radio show on Saturdays Unleashed we had to go to Mellow show, but we didn't because we were all, everybody from Friday and Saturday were still at my house recovering on Saturday. But it was cool. We had a little, um, like, uh, crab wall, so that was cool. Okay. And then, what's, what's today? What is today? Tuesday. 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 <laughs> and I'm still, I didn't eat a single ahead. thing yesterday because I felt uh -oh. too sick from this okay. weekend. Um, literally no calories were intaken yesterday. That's how sick I was this weekend. Wow. You was, sound, sound kind of like me, man. Like, uh, <laughs> yesterday I took a, I took a personal day. Um, and yeah, I did. I took a personal day and I just, I, I spent the day, um, lounging around yes. in the bed, um, and chilling on the couch <laughs> next to the window while it rained and you know the trees and the leaves and the stuff was blowing and it was like a little <laughs> mini hurricane type thing it was very relaxing yeah. no it was really really relaxing and um and i had just some time to just like really really think and just chill you know what I'm saying? oh man oh i got a good question for you uh we're gonna get to that in a minute <laughs> but um my week the week was lit y'all already know how it is man we turned up uh lacy came through on saturday and did a show with mellow and it was like super 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 lit so if y'all missed that y'all definitely could catch it it's on our facebook feed and it's gonna be on youtube sometime this week um let me see what else did we how do was mellow show oh man mellow show is lit did you see me jumping on the I sofa i was like <laughs> bro i was I man, man. look we were super lit we were super lit man mellow always give a good I show and we always make sure we turn up for mellow so hey uh man if y'all miss uh jb billard's uh stewie rock was down there uh mellow opened up and it was lit it was a lituation man you know we had the big ass station we had the folks in there man we pouring <laughs> pour henny and motherfucking bottles and shit man we just turned it was crazy it was crazy but y'all already know, that's how One Blast Radio and the whole team, that's how we step out, man. Whenever we step out, it's a movie. So y'all make sure y'all come through and holler at us anytime you hear about us being out on the scene. You feel me? Come say hey. Um, There's a movie on Sunday. 
We drink like everything. Rum, tequila, vodka. We had some people buy us bottle of Hennessy. People thought actually we were strippers in our sections. <laughs> well, these hoes are so fine. And they were like throwing ones in our section. Literally Damn, throw. that's is that what you invited us to? Yes. Oh, that's fucked up. Man, man, let me tell you. What did I do Saturday night, man? I don't know, but I was I was probably like out of it or something. It I don't crazy. even remember what I did Saturday night. But I know, man, we got up. Y'all missed the barbecue. We barbecued. I know. Said, I had the we were in the barbecue. It was lit. When I tell you, my wig. I wore a wig Saturday night, y'all. My wig didn't make it. Okay? <laughs> my girl Ashley's wig didn't didn't make it. We didn't put. We didn't do. We didn't comb our hair until yesterday. Like. When I tell you, we had to recover. We Man, were recovering was from Saturday. Recover. It was so bad. I had to recover from Mellow Night, too. That's how I it was. I was like, was. damn, yeah. I can't make it. We because, couldn't. Because, mm-mm. Mm-mm. because, yeah, it was a real situation, man. So, shout out to the homie Mellow. Y'all already know, man. We're going to hear some of that Mellow tonight. We actually, uh, I think we got that new track from that. Mellow, uh, too. <laughs> so, we'll get that out there for y'all. And, um... Before we go into playing these songs and paying these bills, man, we're going to go ahead and we're going to shout out our uh, our sponsors. Of course, man, shout out to Smooth Move, your downsizing and relocation experts. They Squad uh, stands for uh, Business Above Everything. It's your members only social club for entrepreneurs. Shout out to Hair Goddess and Love Royally, man. She gets your hair all hooked up and shit. If y'all didn't know, now you know, man, that's my hairstyle. So I'm going to go holler at her because I've been rocking a little <laughs> thought ponytail. You know what I'm saying? It's time for the change. You know what I'm saying? Um... And, and then you can also get at her for all your like um, natural hair care products and like you know uh, natural body butters and you know bath salts and uh, sage and all that stuff. Man, she got all that or whatever. So y'all go holler at her. Um, and then y'all can actually head over to Evolution where you can find the hair goddess. She is actually the shop manager. Um, and it is the first LGBTQ beauty bar. You know what I'm saying? It's right here on Memorial Drive, but sad news is I heard they're going to be moving soon. I think they're moving like on the south side or something like that, but as soon as we got that address, man, we're going to definitely hit y'all up and let y'all know what's going on with that. But for the moment, you can still catch them right there on Memorial Drive. Um, uh, out in the cities, man. Shout out to Out in the Cities. This is like your roadmap to everything LGBT around you. You know what I'm saying? In your city. So go ahead, download download the app. It's, it's on your uh, Google Play and it's on your, uh, your Apple Music Store. You feel me? Uh, shout out to my homie, uh, uh, Country, over at Pressure Visuals. This is your videography, your editing, your video treatments, like all that. If you need that, man, you need to holler at her, man. She got a real good eye. She, she do this shit for real, man. She went to school for this shit. She legit. She fine. You feel me? Um, and then Banks Production presents the Black Excellence Networking. Um, let me tell y'all something, man. Uh, I went down to one of these networking events. It was actually one of the best things that I could have had done. I met a, quite a few people or whatnot, and they actually have a virtual networking event that's coming up in September. Y'all can check out our website and all the information for that, and all the information about our sponsors will definitely be there. And last but not least, we got Amethyst Moon Healer. Um, all your spiritual needs, we talking about, you know, your, your chakra stones, your oils, your starter kits, and all that, man. You know, you need some spiritual healing. Holla at my girl, Nate, slash station manager. You feel right. me? All right. I did, you know what I'm saying? It didn't work, but I tried, okay? Uh, our sponsors. So we tried anyway, man. So shout out to our sponsors. Y'all can catch a little music. We're going to pay these bills real quick and uh, holler at our live feeds. Y'all know what's going on, man. We got technical difficulties today, but we holding it down, pimp. So, the only guitar set that's still open is 20 minutes away from here. You have a show? That's crazy. Yeah, don't worry about it. I get one before Saturday. All right. Yo, Facebook, what's going on, what's going on, man? We love y'all, we appreciate y'all, man. You know, this time we working on trust, but it's that you want to turn around and fuck with these hoes, it's worth it. You want to see cheat, you want to hear your piece of crap. I'm not going to be working this year, like, you're trying to, like, chill. I'm going to be working this we thought we were gonna go to ice bar. Ice bar typically isn't lit, right? No, we get to ice bar and it was chill. I thought you were gonna come hang out with us. I would. It was but then she was an hour away. Yeah, she was first. Right? Yeah, yeah, I thought like, okay, I'm okay. Because I was looking mad because you was like, you were like, the first time I, oh yeah, come on. Oh, I was. I was. You know what? I was like, you were mad about all the information. Come on, we did something. Saturday? We did something Saturday. I don't know what we did. Oh, there we go. We ain't smoking. We'll just leave. I got to go home. Because I live in the yeah, oh, right. I told you she lives yeah. like up north. Yeah. Yeah. So like, oh, yeah, she like 20, 30, 40 minutes from me. So she was like two hours out from y'all. Yeah. She's far. I was like, they're not coming down here. Oh, no. But it was, some guys bought us a bottle of 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. We came on that other side Sunday night, though, man. We was deep out there. We drove about an hour. Some little something not there to get out there. Hustle the middle of it. Like, we stayed around. We left. We were so drunk. Man, listen, I'm talking about, you don't even know the story. You don't even know the story. Like, you don't even know details. You don't know anything. Yeah, no. All she told you was all the way from Canada. We got two people from Canada tuned in. Y'all, man, shout out to Canada. I mean, I want to hear all the stories and stuff, man. You know what I'm saying? That gave us a little something to talk about tonight. Oh, Lacey, you got this. We got stories, and on top of stories, on top of that, stories. So, like, real, um, what night? I plan on probably getting out of here a little early. I rearranged the interview, okay. um, and it pushed uh, Stupid Venom up because, you know, the change and all this other stuff, and then the mic and all that. I get some chorus in here, you know what I'm saying? We get back, we get back right. That's 100. All right. So, no, I was late to the party, but I did it for a day. Um, what are you guys planning in the uh, campaign? I'm not camping, and, but like, Brandy, Brandy pulling it together. Like, we're trying to go to the so we're trying to go to the okay. so we're trying to go to the so I'm not sure if I'm going to see the message. Oh, okay, because I don't think she has a phone. I don't think she has a phone. Yeah, okay, we're good. Oh, I got you. 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 I got you.
Big Spade. Never thought things would ever get this serious. Like fuck around and turn you into my main thing. I wasn't doing the right thing. I mind on everything else. I'm all about it and one else. But you see the best in me Thought we had a destiny Even though I just can't see yeah. And you don't need to see it no more You don't need to want no more But I can't blame you So I can up my last chance Can I have a minute to cry? I'm missing me a Wondering if you need to have a thrill Well, things ever be the same I just cannot take the pain As I'm sick of mine Just thinking about everything I see it right here And I need you everything You got my skin And I need you right there And I'm trying to put you on I'm trying to get you right I'm trying to be so blind I'm 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 so blind so A message from the American Heart Association, the American Stroke Association, and the Ad Council. WWE superstar Alberto Del Rio. Take one. Behold the angry giant. Try it again, Alberto. Behold the angry giant. Perfect. Good luck today. Behold the angry giant. Yay! Read me another one, Dad. This is WWE superstar Alberto Del Rio. It only takes a moment to make a moment. Take time to be a dad today. Visit fatherhood.gov, brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. It may be hard to believe, but people just like you are already saving money. FeedThePig.org makes it easy. Their simple savings plan teaches you how to start saving without going overboard. So you don't need to sell all your belongings and live in a commune. These kind of these belong to all of us now, Tom. You don't need to get a second job. You just need a few more Don't get left behind. Get tips and tools at feedthepig.org. Brought to you by the American Institute of CPAs and Ad Council. And we're back. 
Okay. Yes, we are. YouTube. Yeah, we're back. We're back. We're back. We're back. Okay. 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 All right. So, um, man, again, if you just tuned in, you see us. We in here. We got our we got our nice little COVID nineteen mask going on tonight. You know what I'm saying? Because if y'all hadn't noticed these numbers, they been kind of going yeah. up. But I've been seeing a lot of stuff on the news. I've been seeing a lot of stuff on the Facebook or whatever. And if y'all didn't know, we move seniors. Okay. See, we move seniors. Um, and since we move seniors, we definitely want to be safe and take yeah. all the necessary precautions while we're here inside of uh, our office space because it's office space, it's a shared office space or whatnot. So uh, we will be going back to doing our live interviews or whatnot. So y'all definitely, definitely want to hit me up, man, to come if you try to come down here, sit down and talk to us. You know, the door is open, but we will check your temperature. You do have to have a mask. So uh, with that being said, y'all can definitely hot us about that. But I want to talk about these COVID numbers, man. Yeah. I got a couple stats right here. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Um, now, so positive uh, result numbers are clearly on the rise here in Georgia. Yeah. It is in other states, too. But, you know, we don't talk about Georgia because that's where I live. You know what I'm right. saying? So Georgia now has 195,000. I mean, no, 195,435 total confirmed cases of the COVID out mm-hmm. here, okay? Um, I had a smarty pants do a little mathematics. Uh, according to, um, you know, the number of positive cases and, of course, the dwelling of Georgia, it's about 1%. So it's not even 2% of, still, the, yeah. of, you know, say the population, but it's still a lot. That's 200,000 people, okay, y'all? And then the total confirmed deaths is at 3,842. So almost 4,000 people here in Georgia have died from uh, this COVID exposure, you know what I'm saying? So y'all definitely want to mask up, wash your hands, and be careful. Be safe out here. You know, first and foremost. Stay at home. No, so for, to go outside. I mean, for real. If you don't have to go out, then there's definitely no need for you to go out. But it's people out here who do have to pay their bills. And they have to, you know, they got to do what they got to do. They got to go check on their kids, their parents, their whatever, however, whatever. You know what I'm saying? If you got to go do what you got to do, then of course just be safe. We're not telling people to stop their lives or no shit like that. But you know, it's people who actually like arguing with businesses and different establishments because... Yeah, these establishments want them to wear a mask, and these motherfuckers don't want to wear a mask. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, then people don't understand that, you know, we all have rights and choices and all this other stuff, and they're like, oh, man, I got the right to not wear a mask. Yeah, you also have the right to be borrowed from my motherfucking establishment because, my nigga, this is my shit, and I say you got to have a mask. You know what I'm saying? So uh, the the smart and the safe thing to do would just be, be to wear the mask in the first place. It's better to be safe than sorry. Ain't nobody trying to die from, you know, fucking uh, uh, COVID. COVID. You feel me? Um, so... More cases of COVID. So COVID exposure currently has 260 Gwinnett school employees not working. And this is either due to a positive case or them coming in contact with a positive case or whatnot. We got 260 uh, cases of coronavirus that has been tied to attendees um, and the staff at a North Georgia YMCA children's camp. Uh, this happened in June, but this just came out. See, this happened in June, but they just found this out. They just tell this to the public just wow. now. The CDC came out with this this past weekend. You know what I'm saying? So you have to think about all these people who are out here and they're getting infected and you don't know what's going on. And they out here, and may, they may not even know what's going on, but they're yeah. going out here and they're meeting and they're touching and they're hanging with other people because we have all gotten so lax on the fact that this shit is real. You right. feel me? Um, and, and even and even us around here, yeah. I mean, y'all see us, fortunately for us, like I do. I we sanitize the state, the station, you know what I'm saying? I've always been uh, a very strong advocate of washing my hands and all that other shit in the first place, right? Or whatever, but oh, uh, like man, we we all have to be safe or whatnot. So, um, there's also been a great number of you know canceled or rescheduled events, you know, around the city. So, I decided to come on, uh, come up with a list of some of those things that's won't be happening or will be happening or have been rescheduled or whatever like that. So uh, we got the No Limit reunion with Master P. It's been rescheduled for March of next year. It's going to be at the State Farm Arena. The uh, City Winery Atlanta is temporary closed. Uh, Freak Meat Festival will um, become a series of a 10 drive-in theater concert for 2020. Um, The Georgia Carolina Street Fair is canceled. Candler Park Music Festival is canceled. Alicia Keys is rescheduled to come visit in 2021. The Imagine Music Festival is canceled. The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame cancels its live ceremony. Uh, Gwinnett State uh, Court 
abruptly cancels criminal hearings for two weeks. So, I mean, you know, if you're on lockdown, I feel sorry for you because you're about to get an extra two. You know what I'm saying? And if you're out and, you know what I'm saying, you you on bond, guess what? You get an extra two to hate, chill, and parlay because uh, these niggas, they pushing everything back. You feel me? Um, Atlanta pushes back the first day of school um, and they approve a mask mandate. So, Atlanta Public Schools is not going to start on August 24th. Four, which is like two weeks after they originally had planned but you know all these kids they have to wear a mask right. personally if i had kids my motherfucking kid wouldn't be at school no. i don't care how busy i am i don't care if i ain't got time to teach their motherfucking ass i don't care we're gonna figure it out we're gonna find him a tutor we need to find him a, fi a family member everybody got somebody in their family who was a teacher or something right now and guess what they probably not working you know what i'm saying so a lot of teachers they got laid off a lot of teachers they quit whatever like that you know what i'm saying so um yeah y'all figure out something man there's a lot of places that's opening these little schools and these little daycares and things like that man you know um what they say it take a village we need to get back to that shit you feel me um because the truth of the matter is i don't foresee COVID going anywhere anytime soon you know what i'm saying it's not just going to disappear and fall off the earth we're, we're still going to have to take Those whatever precautions well, they, <laughs> you got a point there. You, you got a point there. You got, you got a point there. But these numbers, they spiking, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, you know, uh, I, I, my hope is that is that this shit just disappeared. But, you know, until further notice, dot, dot, dot. All right. Um, That's a real thing. And, you know, I remember we did a, a show from your house before we started doing shows. And I, I work at a pharmacy because I, I manage a pharmacy. And um, back in February, I think that's when we did that show. Is it February? Or mm -hmm. early parts of March? I think it was early parts of March. Yeah, it was March. So March, when we March, were March, first hearing about, about COVID, everyone was like, well, you know, the, 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 the symptoms are pretty close to a, fe a flu. So at the like pharmacies and hospitals and stuff, people weren't really taking all of the precautions in the early stages. And I remember during that show, we were talking about it and some doctors that came out with some statistics and I was going over those statistics because we follow their guidelines, right? Because I work at a pharmacy. So if a doctor is saying it's not that serious, it's more like the flu, just make sure you wash your hands, etc., 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 that's what to do. So at our pharmacy originally, we didn't require anyone to wear a mask. We didn't have anyone wearing gloves. It was just mainly like we provided hand sanitizer. We tried to make sure everyone was six feet away. Like we literally had to had to um, measure and then tape off six feet away, um, like that kind of thing. And we're doing this show, and during this show, show, this one right here, not the show, but the show, was like, that's crazy, and I think the numbers are going to rise, right? And um, we were doing that show. So fast forward, I had a corona scare because I went out into the world. And if you guys know me personally, I really don't be out here unless I have a reason to go outside i don't you will never just see me somewhere right and so um i was already not really out here but i went into the world y'all <laughs> and after i went into the world i felt sick my cats started like displaying um symptoms like they were sick and so we self-quarantined i stayed home from work we went to get tested we reached out to like cat doctors <laughs> just to make sure virtual cat doctors because my cats didn't even, they don't even go outside, so if they're sick, it's my fault, mm -hmm. right? So we reached out to cat doctors, we got medicine sent to the house. Um, we were negative, but since then, like, even for me personally, because I manage a pharmacy, and I wear makeup, I wear lip gloss, I don't want to wear a mask, bro! Why am I doing my makeup if I wear a mask? That's stupid. Um, even for me personally, I started taking more precautions. So before I touch anybody's anything, whether that's their money or their medicine, I make sure that I have gloves on. When people like stop me in the pharmacy and they, they want to ask a question about something, I may I literally will I, <laughs> I would do this motion for those of you guys watching. I see for those of you guys who are not watching, but you guys are listening. I do that little you know hand up front like uh. -uh. <laughs> and, <laughs> wait a minute, <laughs> goddamn legit. You know what I'm saying? I'm so much more precautious. I make sure that my employees have masks and gloves. I make sure that all of my employees have. Clorox wipes and Lysol wipes, even if we don't sell them in the store, we still have them for employees. I make sure that every single station that has a like a countertop has hand sanitizer for people to use while they're shopping. 
Because while you're grabbing stuff or while you're looking at stuff, while you're walking out of doors, it doesn't mm -hmm. matter if you're wearing gloves. Because when you wear those gloves and you walk into a store and you touch everything or you touch your money, you get stuff. money, mm -hmm. you, talk, you, 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 you touch somebody else or you touch... If I'm giving you your medicine, I've been, I've been wearing these gloves all day, but if I've been touching other people's medicine or their money, like, my hands are not clean, my gloves are not clean. I literally make sure that there's hand sanitizer everywhere for everyone, that I make sure that everything in the store... Whether it's a door that people can pull out, like if they want drinks, or whether it's a keypad for when they're paying for their medicines and stuff, I make sure that everything is, is sanitized every 30 minutes. I really do. I go as far as lysong the air. I will walk through the entire store lysong the air every hour. <laughs> right? It's a real thing. Mm -hmm. And even having customers, you know, wear masks. And at my pharmacy, our sign says it's required but in our fine print it says we cannot turn anyone away who's not wearing one so mm -hmm. really it's not required it's right. suggested but um it's like since then and since these new numbers and the world opening back up just a little bit i really want people to really think about the implications of covid you know what i mean and even if i don't die from it or show doesn't die from it we're around so many people i remember somebody messaged me actually so we went to uh where did we go when we went out. Gossip. Okay. This is crazy. So we went, when I went into the world, we went to Gossip Lounge in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. That Monday, I went to work and I was like, I'm feeling kind of ill. That Wednesday or Thursday, I actually left work early. By Friday, I was quarantining myself, right? And then I posted something about it. Somebody who was at Gossip Lounge that night messaged me on Facebook and they said, hey, I was at Gossip Lounge the same night you were. I live with my grandmother and I had my friend who was also at Gossip Lounge come to my house the day after that and we both came in contact with you. And so she, she was so serious and she was like, can you please just let me know your results because I have a grandma, yeah. right? And so for me, it was so heartbreaking like to read, it was a, it was a much longer message, <laughs> right. but to read that message, you know, for me, because when I went to, and I, I, I didn't have COVID, I was, I was negative, so Gossip Lounge is still cool, y'all go. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> please go. You know, but you want to hear something funny? I felt sick that week, too. I wasn't sick, though. <laughs> but I felt you sick felt that week, too, though, right? Yeah, but I felt sick that week, too. And, I, and that was the same thing I was thinking, oh, God, man. And when I, uh, when I went to the world, blah, 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 whatever, I was fine. Like, it's a real thing. I mean, yeah. every and I message all my friends too. Like I message, I took one of my friends with me. I, I messaged her like, "How are you feeling?" Because I actually do feel sick this week. And then we went to Atlanta Bonfire the day after we went to Gossip Lounge, and I'm just like, "Bro, I don't. I'm not feeling it. I'm not. I I feel literally sick." Um, but also, this is summer. I talked to a paramedic, and they were like, "You know, we get a lot of calls from people who want." Uh, emergency rides to the hospital y'all want to pay sixteen hundred dollars for to go to the hospital because of covid stuff yeah. but but they call 911 because they need an ambulance out there because they feel sick and this paramedic was like please also i mean get tested but remember that a lot of people start getting summertime colds cold. around this time as well yeah you know the weather here be so up and down the rain the heat the whatever however it was chilly actually last night it was in like the 60s you yeah. know what i'm saying which i mean for this time it's kind of chilly buzz we used to be in hot in, at nighttime or whatnot so um so yeah that definitely make a difference well look man we're gonna shoot in play a little <laughs> bit of um a no. little bit more music man you know what i'm saying pay a couple more bills and we're gonna come back and we're gonna do a little bit more talking you know what i'm saying we already know what the phone number is six seven eight seven 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 four five eight three y'all can hit us up as soon as my station manager got the phone up the bag bow all right man it's been real No, snail. Oh, um, I forgot we were drinking rum. The I mean, phone is in the bag. It's a, it's in a little case. Um, and um, um you have to power it on. It's powered out. It should have a charge though.
mess with me. We always have fun. That's all we do. Fun is our thing. You know what I'm saying? CC Prestige, you already know what to do, fam. You know what I'm saying? Shoot the five to our cash app. And you can send that song over to OBR Spin. That's O B R S P I N S at Gmail. But I'm gonna type that in for you, you feel me? Busy, but I don't typically like forget. 
I forgot about the solo shoot. I don't post something. <laughs> so bad. I'm going to still promote the show, though I won't be in the cast photos at all. <laughs> oh, well, that's okay. Because you're going to be remembered regardless. You know I what I'm saying? So, so it's all good. You know? so bad, well, shit. Because you want to be professional. Of course. You definitely want to be professional. But you were professional because you were here. <laughs> <laughs> Please put that thing back. Oh, all right. All right, all right. So, oh man, man, our interview oh, just man. stepped in the building, you know what I'm saying? I'm oh, happy about gosh. that, man. Uh, if y'all didn't hear, uh, we do, we got Stinger Venom it's in the building. Um, and Lacey's actually gonna be getting started with that interview like in the next maybe 15 minutes, you know. I'm gonna get him a little, I'm gonna get him a little space because we got some technical difficulties going on in this space, you know what I'm saying? Um, but another thing that we wanted to talk about, since we will be cutting out of here early, let's go ahead and touch base on all these uh, trans murders that's been going on. Um, so this I, not really I, I was, well, see, man, you know, I, I didn't either. So I've been checking the stats, man. Yeah. You know, I, I went and I did my little Google research, you feel me? And um, in 2019, advocates tracked at least 27 deaths, you know, of transgender um, or or gender non-conforming people in the U.S. And this was due to fatal violence. Um, you know, the majority of those people were black transgender women. So that was in 2019. Now, we're not even all the way through 2020, and we already have at least 25, you know, uh, transgender or gender non-conforming people who have been fatally shot or killed by other means of violence. So, and so, you know, and these are just the cases that have been, you know, mainstreamed and been put out there or whatnot. And, you know, like, while I feel like it is starting to get a little bit of notice and notoriety or what, I'm not, you know what I'm saying? Uh, there's still not nothing being done about it, though. And that's, you know that's why? the good thing, of course, man, you know. It's, no, no, it's, no. It's, it's Legit, you know why? You, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I did a whole, so for my thesis in college, I actually did it on transgender everything because I don't I'm not trans and even you know being underneath the LGBT rainbow he, we all in, in the on the black side we all typically stay in our bubble so if you're lesbian all your friends home. they lesbian you know and so I, I wanted to know more about transgender people in general and what I found out is so glad and a, and a lot of other organizations were very hard to get um, LGBT protection rights right mm -hmm. did you know that it is not a federal hate crime if you commit a crime against a transgender person. But it is if you commit a crime against a gay, lesbian, or bisexual person. Hmm. So GLAD and other organizations, they work very hard for people under the rainbow, but a lot of times when they're pushing these bills or they're asking for these requirements, what they have to settle on is only giving rights to gay males and lesbian women and bisexual people but transgender people actually get cut out so if you ever see like an article and this is what the media does they'll be like oh LGBT win right or LGBT law changed or whatever read the actual law nowhere in there is there a protection for transgender rights it actually hate crimes for transgender people in general is state by state so if a state doesn't support transgender people, guess what? There's no federal law that protects them, none. Like, if if any, there are minor laws, but as many laws as we have right now, as lesbian women, they do not. And it's really sad. So when you hear, we don't, when you don't hear, you don't actually hear about transgender deaths because there's nothing wrong with a transgender death when it actually comes to the law. So the media is not gonna cover it depending on the state that you live in. It really takes social media, the families of, and local news stations reporting transgender deaths for them to even be blasted, period. Wow. Isn't that person? Miss, I don't even know anything. <laughs> 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 no, a little bit. Uh, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. We appreciate that. Uh, like, so basically hit us with all the juice, man. And all I know is, man, the shit got to change. We got to do something. So guess what, man? You know, uh... We gotta talk more about I these things. You always got a story hit me with it. What's up? So I have a transgender aunt, and um, she's always been my trans aunt. But when I was a little kid, I didn't know she was trans. I just knew that she would come. She would go to work. She worked in construction or something, and she'd go to work in masculine 
clothes and like you know she would look that way and um, she would come home and go straight to the bathroom and she would leave for the night or chill the rest of the night in very feminine clothes i didn't know as a little kid you don't know right, right? and so um i actually took her to get um some of her post-op surgeries a few years ago mm -hmm. and i was so honored but i was talking to her because there's a lot that i don't know that happens in their communities right and so i was just asking her these questions because i really want to make sure that I know what's happening and I'm not disrespecting anybody. Yeah. Um, and she was telling me at the time that she lived in Las Vegas in the early 2000s. And she was dating this guy. And he knew up front that she was trans. But his friends didn't know and his family didn't know. And she said one of his friends found out and uh, told the rest of his crew or whatever. And they beat her almost to death. They actually left her to die. Wow. Right? Her boyfriend included. He joined in on the party like and she said they were together for uh, almost two years wow. right beat her almost to death um they left her to die she had no friends there she had like a couple of you know um i mean she had no family she had a couple of friends there because she also does a lot of drag even though she's post op um she's she's started off doing drag so she's mm -hmm. just carried that she's a pretty famous drag queen and so um she was like what's crazy is it was never anywhere and when i went to the hospital uh she said that somebody made a comment about her uh, sexual orientation and her presentation instead of what they actually did to her, like guilting her for what happened to her. Well, if you weren't like this, then maybe it wouldn't have happened. And that's what happens so many times with people in the transgender community. It's either we're going to put the most sadistic things that they don't even do on them, or we're going to tell them, well, you know what, if you knew who you were, then you wouldn't be dealing with this. If you were just okay with who God made you, you wouldn't be dealing with this. And it's like, okay, but I, I am who I am. So let's talk mm -hmm. about what's happening right now. I am what I am. So can I get treated with some respect in in that realm? And it just sucked. And I was sitting in the car with her and I was just crying listening to this story. And it's like, this kind of thing happens. It's a norm for them. If you talk, a lot of transgender people, when you talk to them, they've, they've, they've had this specific encounter yeah. and it's really depressing that in our community on a mainstream level like literally on an overall level we don't acknowledge this and a lot of times we are also really really ignorant to when it comes to transgender people and it's whenever I talk to gay men or lesbian women or bisexual women or asexual people or who who LGBTQ plus IA <laughs> every time I talk to the QSIA people I'm always like uh, dumbfounded by how much we don't educate ourselves about trans people because they're in our community yeah. and they deserve protection and respect as well. Mm -hmm. I agree. <laughs> I think uh, I think um, for me, um, it took a whole lot of getting used to after I started, like you know, um, coming across and you know being friends with more trans people or whatnot. It is very, very difficult to get accustomed to the pronouns and things like that. I appreciate all my friends who have been like understanding, you know what I'm saying? Because just like it's a transition and stuff for them, it's a transition for, for us too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If they didn't know because you know, your natural instinct is to go with whatever that was on point. Yes, exactly. Or whatnot. So it takes a great deal of getting used to and making sure that you don't offend or disrespect, you know, people that you care about or whatnot. So, um, like I, I I know that just even going through that it takes a whole lot, man. So shout out to all my trans people, man. Y'all already know y'all got love and support over here at All Black Radio Atlanta. So Get us up, man. I'm glad y'all, man. That's what I do, man. Y'all be doing big things out here, too, man. We can't wait to holler at y'all. You feel me? Um, we're going to play a couple more songs, and then we're going to be coming back with Stinger Venom. We got Stinger Venom in the building, man. So, uh, I hope y'all are ready for that. Hi, guys. <laughs> I don't know that it's a computer for the camera. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm looking here for I'm looking here for some music. I'm looking for something. Yeah. Whatever you want to talk about. Here, let me um, let me see. 
you can have it. Loving you is like a bad habit. Never had a love like this before. Had me doubling back just to get more. Legs in the air, you're looking down. Side of the bed, I'm going round. Take me to the ground. Yo, man, that was my homie Gas of Beats. Gas of Beats with Closer, man. I don't know if y'all grabbed that album, but uh, it was like a real, 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 real lituation. So, y'all, make sure y'all check out my man Gas of Beats. That's with a Z on Instagram. You get all his info. Uh, y'all can download his music and do whatever. He do it all. He sing, he rap, he engineer. Clearly, he make beats. So, y'all holla at him. Man, we got Stinger Venom in the building, man. And I'm just waiting on uh, Lacey Doll to bring her beautiful self back on in here, you know what I'm saying, so she can get this interview cracking or whatever. Hey, man, you know, I called, okay. you came, you know what I'm saying, I like that, okay. Um, so, yeah, man, I'm, I'm, I'm going to let y'all do y'all thing, man. I'm over here, I'm going to chill over here in the cut, man, and, 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 and handle this, and, and y'all, y'all handle that, you know what I'm saying. Okay. You guys, Big Daddy's show said so we got Stinger Venom in the building. And so this is Stinger right beside me for those of you guys who are watching on our live feed and video. And for you guys who are listening to us, Stinger Venom is right me. So introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about you and also where people can find you on social media. What's up, y'all? It's Audra, a.k.a. Scorpio. Um, you can follow Stinger Venom at Stinger underscore Venom on Instagram. And that is S-T-I-N-G-E-R underscore V-E-N-O-M. Um, also, StingerVenom.com spelled the same way, just like it sounds. Oh, well, I'm from Atlanta. Um, I'm Stinger Venom's been going on for about three years now. Started off as just really a bad company. And then I recently, actually, in the last couple of months, it's send it to clothing. Um, bags were my go-to accessory because I traveled a lot for business and when I saw a duffel bag or a book bag, I was like, oh, I want that. Oh, I want, you know what I mean? And I also thought that bags were like a statement piece. Um, so, recently, the COVID has sh kind of transferred for transformed my business to something different. Uh, people weren't traveling, so I said, I still gotta eat. So, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, and I and I um, ventured out to clothing, and since then, it's actually business has been doing extremely well. It's been a hit. <laughs> I added, see you, for you know. And when I first started, I was like, you know, I don't want to do clothes because everybody doing clothes. But at the end of the day, everybody need clothes. You know what I mean? And they don't. They need several pairs of clothes. So I think you know, venturing out to that has um, grown my brand tremendously, and I'm getting a lot of support in the community most of you. One hundred. Oops, sorry. You guys, you guys know that one of our cords went out, so we are. Well, we and then we came today, and another one went out. Like yeah. it was just bad luck. Around here. Show, so if you guys hear something, please don't be upset. It's that I'm moving my microphone so that we could actually share it because we wanted to make sure we give you guys a show today. So you just make do what you got. That's 100. All right. So you talk about you know your line was a bag line, mm -hmm. and then you went to close, and you weren't going to start it because other people had closed. I know you did though because, and I love this quote, mm -hmm. Rihanna started Fenty Beauty and she said there are other makeup lines out there, I won't start Fenty, but we'll be lost. Of course. Of course. So, <laughs> what? We <laughs> will be lost. So we talked about, and I love that you said this, because um, a lot of people don't think about how COVID has genuinely impacted a lot of um, smaller businesses. You know, larger businesses have still been able to get bailed out, they've still been able to get millions. But smaller businesses, 
they've really they've 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 hurt. Do you feel like because of COVID or since COVID since COVID has your company done better with the clothes and they were done with just the backs? Man, um it's crazy because COVID has helped my business tremendously. Um and thus the climate of the world, people are blind buying black now. Uh and it and it opened you know, I feel like everything happened for a reason. Um, it opened my mind to different avenues and not just bags because not only uh what's the quote, um basically, you know, the change in the world fueled me to make a change in my business mm -hmm. for the better. Um so, you know, of course, honestly tenfold my business has been doing since COVID. I mean, without a doubt, people you know, the black dollar is strong, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And people are are really investing in their own communities and taking that into consideration. But I want to say something because, you know, I'm a black business, but I don't want people to buy from me just because I'm black. Right. I want people to buy from me because I'm genuinely a good company. I do great business, right. and I got great customer service. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Good quality. Exactly. So I'm more than just, I don't want to, I'm not, I don't want to limit, I'm more than just a black business. I'm, I want to be a great black, black business. Here's what we all want to know. What's up? What the stinger been on me? <laughs> Tell me. <laughs> okay, so um, it's crazy. It's the name was really a fluke. Let me just be honest, because I started off with something totally different. And what was it? The only I don't even want to say it, but it was not <laughs> even similar to what I'm doing now. And I knew off back I wanted my symbol to be a scorpion because I'm a Scorpio, and not a, you don't see any other brands with a scorpion. So I knew that. Um, when I was coming up with the website, I was on the phone with GoDaddy. I'm like, is this available? Is this available? <laughs> and then it ended up being Stinger Venom was available, and that, that's how the name stuck. And then um, I started doing more research about scorpions. Um, scorpions are very tenacious. They've been on Earth for millions of years. They can withstand pretty much any harsh temperature or environment. So they're very tenacious creatures. Um, not only that, their venom is worth is one of the most expensive liquids in the world. Think of uh, uh, Scorpion's Venom. It's like $39 million a gallon. So um, it kind of just all went with my brand, my luxury, I, my, my deal of luxury, um, and being underestimated, but very fierce and very uh, expensive and, and uh, um, valuable at the same time. So my, what my brand represents is number one, for the entrepreneur, student, anybody, is really to be keep going, no matter what your goals are, keep going because I've had so many ups and downs in my business, and I feel like right now is my time. You know what I mean? Because I feel like I've been, I've been putting in work three years. You know what I mean? And consistently doing it's it's really consistent, being consistent every day, getting up and doing the same thing. You don't see you see zero sales for a week. You still got to go back, try it again, make some adjustments and go hard. Yeah, so yeah, that's what Stinger Venom basically is. It's about keep going no matter what and get that and get it done. Um, I personally see Stinger Venom stuff everywhere, right? Like somebody's always like, I'm in my Stinger Venom. <laughs> I'm actually go, I'm going to the club stuff and I'm stepping out in my Stinger Venom and I'm just like, what? And so I'm gonna beg it to meet you because I'm like, what is thing? Oh man, we was all we was deep with the bags and the shit the weekend. Right? It was lit, man. It was a lit situation. It was a lit so weekend. I was like, damn, who is thing? <laughs> um, okay, so what is your favorite brand? Like, what is your favorite brand? Oh, you are from Atlanta. I am. How do you feel about everybody migrating to Atlanta? Um, I, I feel like you know wherever you go, as long as you have a plan, um, some and make connections. Um, and you have a solid, not just because everybody's coming, you have a plan to be here because I feel like, you know, I don't, I feel like we don't own enough in Atlanta, no. um, but you know, we're sisters. perceived to be the black Mecca. Um, but at the end of the day, if you come here, just have a plan and, um, you know, some type of connection here. So you have a idea of what you're doing. When you get here. And what advice would you give? somebody who does have a plan, you know, somebody who can be down here be, for, for a purpose, not just because they date and some girl. Right. They, <laughs> <laughs> they end up single. Yeah. <laughs> but somebody with a plan mm -hmm. 
if you met somebody and they were like, oh my gosh, I just moved here, but I want to do da 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 da, mm -hmm. what advice would you give them about staying focused or making whatever it is that you want to do work? Um, networking, getting with the right. You're gonna when you get here, you're gonna meet a lot of people who say they're gonna do something. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of capping going mm -hmm. on in Atlanta, but you have to weed through all the BS and find people who are genuine um, and who are. Not only, you know, don't, you know, when you find, number one, find a mentor. That's my, you know, my oh. advice. Find a mentor and um, not only when you find this mentor, be able to give to this mentor as well. Don't just be on the receiving end. Be, be able to provide some type of, even if, if it's just your time, give something in return to get connections you need and the network you need. You know what? So when you were saying about, you know, there's a lot of capping going on. <laughs> everybody says that, but it's true. You guys look. My first year in Atlanta, I got some stories. Um, but everybody talks about, you know, the capping. You're gonna meet frauds. You're gonna meet people trying to play you. But I have never, I have never until right now heard somebody say, "Get you a mentor mm. when you get here." Right? And that's so smart. Mm -hmm. Get you a mentor who's really gonna help guide you. Don't just get somebody who says, "I'm gonna mentor you" because they want to use your skill. Right. Um, all right, so promotion. I, this is my very first time meeting you, having a conversation with you, sitting down with you. I, I did not know Stinger Venom was black female, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So um, your marketing, impeccable. Because you've been able to, and I can only tell you from my perspective, okay. build a brand that's strong, that people love, that people are proud to promote mm -hmm. without having to attach lesbian <laughs> or black or female on it so what kind of tips would you give people as far as like marketing themselves um you know what um for me it's really first of all i mean i didn't want to be labeled as just a lesbian you know what i mean but that's kind of just given because i started off in the black gay lesbian mm -hmm. community in atlanta so I didn't have to say, hey, I'm a black lesbian. <laughs> you know that by looking at me. You know what I mean? Um, and I think at the end of the day, people, and I know for me, I don't walk around with rainbows on. You know what I'm saying? You know, you know? <laughs> I don't, you know what I mean? So at the end of the day, they want to be treated like regular people. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't, you know, I haven't released a rainbow shirt yet. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so, so you know, at the end of the day, they like to look good. At the end of the day, they want to look good. They want to, you know, they want to be in style. They want to, you know, feel good when they wear something. They don't want to be, oh, I want to be gay when I wear. I, I live this. You know what I'm saying? So I ain't got to put on a rainbow to show you that. I want to look good at the end of the day. You know, and that's what I try, try to exude in my in my brand is luxury for affordable luxury. You know what I mean? So you don't have to spend with Louis Vuitton, Gucci to look good. You know what I mean? It's a really about how you wear it and just be confident in it. Yeah. Well, let me tell you, bro, that damn bag make me look good. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, bro, I look like I'm stepping out on business. I look like I'm going to have a nice fly date with a nice chick that I'm planning on spending the night with. Right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. no, no, definitely. You better That's what it's about, man. That's what it's about, man. Feeling good. When you wear something, at the end of the day, you want to feel good, yeah. and that's what I want to exude. I want you, you know, feel luxury, like you got money. You know what I'm saying? You might not have a dime in your pocket, but when you put on some Stinger Venue, like, oh yeah, I'm gonna catch me one today. <laughs> Tell us about your experience starting. Um, what aspect of it? Um, it was it. Well, I started off with the duffel bag, mm -hmm. and I kind of wish I didn't, but because I spent the most on duffel bags in the beginning. But um, it took a lot. Of, I just wanted. It took a lot of designing, going back and forth with designers, um, shipping it here, and then say, oh, I don't like this. Let's change this. Let's add this. Let's tweak this. Um, so I wanted everything down to the zipper. I wanted to be a, a, a certain way. Um, so. It took a lot in the beginning to just come up with a duffel bag. The first duffel bags were, my first shipment was like five grand. And I wish I didn't do wow. that because I could have started small and worked my way up to that. But I went straight for the juggler, you know what I mean, with the duffel bags. But still, um, I think that was all part of my growing process, you know what I mean? And I think my, uh, actually I think my duffel bags, are, I take the most pride in my duffel I put the most work into my duffel bags. 
down to the stitching inside, to the zippers, to the scorpion on the front, to the cowhide leather. I just want it to be perfect. So I put a lot of time and effort in that. And that, you know, I think I, I showed that in the day. A lot mm -hmm. of people, I love it. Ooh, this is great. Okay, so a lot of people got clothing lines. A lot of people sell clothes or whatever. You know, they sell lingerie, they sell whatever. Your products are not wholesale. Buy them on AliExpress, buy them on Amazon, buy the exact same thing on Fashion Nova clothes. Mm -hmm. Yours are literally designed, handcrafted, if not stitched, you know, still handcrafted by you. Mm -hmm. Are you asking me? Yes. Like, okay. <laughs> so, um, like I said, I spent the most time on my bags. When I venture, honestly, and I'm, you know, I might be telling my secrets, Honestly, when I got into clothing, I kind of went towards the trends because that's what it was so. Mm -hmm. So you can find vendors everywhere. Yeah. In Georgia, you yeah. know, to, for your clothing line. But um, so I went for the trends, and I'm developing for fall unique stuff just for my brand. Yeah. So I could, I you know, be honest, you can find these clothes anywhere. I'm gonna just keep it 100. You can find stinger venom everywhere. No, you can't find that's that's the key. Right. You know what I mean? You can't find stinger venom, but these are clothes. At the end of the day, um. One of my Facebook friends said that she Thank said, you, um, basically she said that, you know, you're not buying the clothes, you're buying the clothes of how they make you feel. Yeah. So when I, when I put a, a brand, put Stinger Venom on, you know, a clothing, on clothing, it's really what you're buying. You're buying the luxury feel. That's what you're buying. That's, that's what I sell. You know what I'm saying? I don't right. sell clothes. I sell a feeling. You know what I mean? I sell a mood. You know what I mean? And so that's what makes Stinger Venom different from you know, just any other clothes. So where can people find Stinger Venom? I'm like, I'm at home, I'm listening to this, I'm like, I want some! StingerVenom.com <laughs> It's simple. Um, mm -hmm. Stinger Venom is Stinger Venom, Stinger underscore Venom um, on Instagram, Facebook, Stinger Venom. Uh, so I'm pretty much everywhere. And then they have to buy from y'all. So look, y'all, don't be trying to go on Amazon <laughs> to find Stinger Venom. Y'all not gonna find it! Right. <laughs> Not yet, at least. You know, yeah. <laughs> but uh, you know, honestly, I've been I've been saying, and this I've seen it mainly in 2020. I don't know if it's because a lot of people got laid off due to COVID, or because we have more time to really focus on and hone in on our skills and our crafts and learn more. Mm -hmm. But I've been seeing a lot of um, commercials and advertisements for people starting Amazon stores. Yeah. Do you feel like at some point you will sell your items? on like every possible platform where people can buy? No, nah, I like having control over my customers. Yeah. So when I go to uh, stingervenom.com, I want, I can, I know you went to my site, you might join my email, you might, by the way, text Venom to 81787 and uh, get a, you might get a, you know, discount code or something. So it's text Venom huh? to 817 eight seven all right but yeah i get their phone number so i can i can um you know talk to them have a conversation and promote to them so if you're in like and you see all these major stores macy's you know dealers all these stores are closing closing but at the end of the day you know once they're gone they're gone but i'm always going to have contact with my customers so that's not and i may not ever get a store storefront yeah. you know what i mean but I like having access to my customers. So I've heard that with um, people who have online stores and online boutiques, mm -hmm. I actually recently heard somebody say, I like to know that even if a store closes down, I'm not losing profit exactly. because I have complete control over my product and where it comes from, mm -hmm. who's selling it. So all of these, that's so smart, you're so smart. I, I, I read a lot. I have a mentor. Uh, my brother actually is my mentor. He owns this watch company. It's the oh. Italian Twine Black Owned Watch Company. I was looking at your watch. Yes. yes, <laughs> yes. Um, Wait, so spell it out for the people who are listening and viewing. Yeah, T A L L E Y and A N D T W I N E. And that's his watch company. Italian Twine, been in Essence, Ebony, going to be in Oprah in the fall. So, yeah. Indeed. You guys, this watch is so nice. For can we days. can we get that uh that that text code again, please? Oh, uh, eight venom, and um eight one seven eight seven. Eight one seven eight seven. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, what has been your biggest hurdle? What is like the one thing that you was like, 
He was like, I don't think I can get over this, or it was the toughest to learn. Man, every day I'm like, okay. Um, so I had a like a before COVID. I have an right before COVID. I was, you know, talking to my girlfriend. I was like, man, like I'm feel like I'm doing whatever I can, and I'm not seeing the sales. You know what I mean? And honestly, what don't don't think got me do was through it is to keep going. Like you really. At the end of the day, you're gonna you're gonna go through all these emotions in in business, but the only difference gonna make you from somebody who loses and wins is your tenacious being tenacious. Mm -hmm. That's again, that's what back to what Stinger Vietnamese is about. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Keep going no matter what. You're you're gonna have down days. You're gonna be like, what am I doing wrong? Mm -hmm. But what if I would have gave up? Right. You wouldn't be here right now. I, you know, I wouldn't be right here. You know what I mean? <laughs> I wouldn't even be. I wouldn't got over that hump and got into this consistent sale mode and being able to go on interviews and uh, you know motivate other people you know what i mean so mm -hmm. you gotta keep going all right so mm -hmm. real quick our topics of the day you weren't here for our conversations but one of them you you, you heard some mm -hmm. of but our topics of the day is really just about the covid number spiking and then also about the murder of trans murder rate of trans people right now do you have anything to add about the COVID numbers going up or the importance of knowing or helping or being there for trans people because of the murder rate? Um, as far as COVID, I don't think it's going anywhere. The numbers gonna keep going up, just like flu or whatever else. Um, I think the most important thing we can do when it comes to COVID is number one, check out health. And I, you know, I I need to work out more. I need to eat right. You know what I mean? So. I think number one, we can't control the numbers. All we can do is control ourselves. And I think eating right, working out is going to really be how you get up beat this. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's unfortunate. You know, you, I heard about a kid who lost both of his parents. And, you know, both, you know, it's it's tragic. But at the end of the day, we have to look at ourselves and, 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 and you know, change our eating habits. Same thing I was saying last week. We have to look at ourselves and hold ourselves accountable for exactly. some of the things that we put ourselves into exactly. in situations when we know what the hell is going on. Exactly. We can't, we can't, we can't, we have to work, focus on our health. And I think with health comes wealth, like, you know, like they said. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I definitely. Um, no, you definitely. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, as far as, you know, trans death, um, is you brought that up about the law, and I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, and it's going to start with that law being changed. That's the only way. Yeah. People are going to have to get, I mean, if there's no consequence, how can you make any change? It's it start with legislation. So, really crazy. so once we have, you know, enough, um, enough legislation, <laughs> yeah. no, it's, it's, um, better uh, laws, then we can do better as far as um, transgender. It, it has to be federal because if I'm a trans person in California, I'm probably going to have more protection mm -hmm. than I will if I'm a trans person in Alabama. You know, we, the South has a lot of problems. Right. More than just trans issues. Really? So, <laughs> no. I'm not surprised. It's a real thing. We definitely need to make sure that we uh, take care of people. We love having you. 100. Hey, look, before you leave, we need you to tell everybody one more time where they can find you, where they can find you, clothes, all that. You know what I'm saying? Tell them who you is. Tell them where we can find you. All right. I'm Scorpio, a.k.a. Stinger Venom. I can be found at Stinger underscore Venom, StingerVenom.com, Facebook. Think of Venom. Um, I ain't gonna say my government on online, but I'm you'll be able to find it. You'll be able to find it. One hundred, for real. One hundred. All right, well, man, we got a special request from the big homie Melo on this thing. Hey, hey, think of hey, Venom. Hey. You know what? No. Wait, you're a rapper too? No, that no, it's Melo. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was talking about that. Yeah, she's getting shaky, cause she's bad. Think of Venom, say it's bad.
So this is my um 39 mil tea. Basically, what I told you about the single women and the girls. So y'all got one. This is my makeup mask, y'all. Oh, all right. So you don't mess with it. Right, right. 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 Right, right.
Donations. Uh, that is the cash sign on Blast Radio ATL. Um, if you want any type of service, then you can go ahead and you hit us up. Uh, we look forward to talking and working with all of y'all. Again, y'all have a good night. I appreciate y'all tuning in to the motherfucker True Session. Don't get nowhere to miss. You did. My bad, y'all. We love y'all. Bye-bye.